In the previous video, we covered how to apply Euler's equation to solve a first order linear ODE. So now let's talk about errors. And you should see pages uh, 294 to 296 of Greenberg. And table one shows solutions, both the numerical solutions and the exact solution for that example function. So table one shows numerical solutions and analytical solutions of the example function. That example function was y prime is equal to y plus 2x minus x squared. And at um, point y3, he shows the solutions for, well, he shows um, the solutions for all values of y is evaluated and at different uh, step sizes. But I'm just going to show what he has for point 3, which is at uh, point x3 is equal to 1.5. And for a step size of h is equal to 1 half, the numerical solution is 4.4375. The solution at for when um, h was set to 0 0.1, that is 6.1095. When the numerical solution was calculated for a step size of 0 0.02, the uh, solution was 6.5975. And the exact solution, the, the analytical solution, is 6.7317. So you can you you might notice well you should notice something here is that as the step at the largest step size the solution is quite a bit different from the exact solution but as the step size is decreased the solution starts to approach the final solution here. So why does the solution get closer to being exact as h decreases? So let's talk about why this is. So remember, we're evaluating the function at discrete points, and we're projecting along lines between the points. And you can imagine that as we decrease the number of steps between point uh, x0 and x3, we're going to evaluate the slope at different points at, at more more frequently. We're going to evaluate the slope more frequently and thus and shoot less far each time. And therefore we're going to get an increasingly better approximation of the true shape of the curve as we move uh, between our two points. So basically, um, error decreases with um, decreasing h because we shoot far, shoot less far each step. We evaluate the slope f more frequently and thus more accurately represent the continuous function between our start and end point.
the true continuous solution between x0 and our endpoint, x3. So I hope that makes uh, intuitive sense. So let's talk about the sources of error. We have three primary sources of error here. The first source of error is computer round-off error. That is, the computer uh, stores information about each number, and the number is therefore accurate to a finite number as, of significant figures. With uh, more powerful computers, we are often working in double precision, so our, the number of significant figures is quite large. But nonetheless, it's still an error, a source of error that um, can be important to some problems. We'll put this, um, this part aside, and now we'll focus on two other sources of error. That's the local truncation error. which is the error um, at each step um, as we discretize our system. There's an error associated with each step we take along our path. And then finally, we have an accumulated truncation error along the whole path. So why do we call these truncation errors? The reason is, and uh, is in fact related to the Taylor series expansion. So like Green Greenberg, I'm going to write the exact solution uh, as y evaluated at point x sub n. So that's the exact solution. And remember, the exact solution can be re represented by a Taylor series expansion exactly um, as x evaluated at point n minus 1 plus the first derivative of y evaluated at point x n minus 1 times the distance x n minus x n minus 1. And that distance is uh, our step size plus the second derivative evaluated at x n minus 1 divided by 2 times our step size squared and so on. And let's compare this exact Taylor series expansion with our pro approximate numerical solution. So y sub n is the notation we use for approximate solution. And that, oops, let me make sure that N looks like an N and not an H. And that's, again, equal to Y sub N minus 1, our approximate solution at the previous point, plus our slope, um, which is F evaluated at point X N minus 1, Y N minus 1, times our step size. X again, again, that step size was the difference between x sub n and x at point n minus 1. So you can see that by comparing these 
the exact solution with the approximate numerical solution, we have all these additional terms that are not evaluated by Euler's method. And this is the um, this is the local truncation error. We've essential, essentially, by doing our numerical approximation, we've truncated our Taylor series. And it turns out we can express all the remaining terms as y prime evaluated at some point between the point xn and xn minus 1 times h squared over 2. So this this one point, which we're going to call the Greek letter C, again, is somewhere in the interval between x n minus 1 and x n. So one more time, we've shown the exact solution as a Taylor series expansion, and we're approximating that keeping the first two terms in the Taylor series expansion, and therefore we're left with a truncation error that can be completely described by the second derivative of y evaluated at some point in the current interval times h squared over 2. So let's, this again represents the truncation error. So let's look at the size of that truncation error. So the local truncation error is little e sub n. Again, that's the that's equal to, that's defined as the difference between the exact solution at point, point xn and the approximate solution. And again, that's the, the rest of the Taylor series, which is precisely equal to y double prime evaluated at point c times h squared divided by 2. And the key point here is that you'll notice that the truncation error is proportional to h squared. En is proportional to h squared. And another way of saying that en is proportional to h squared is that en is of order h squared. The capital O here stands for of order. It, it's um, of order of magnitude h squared, or it's proportional to h squared. So as h, so if h is less than one, as we decrease h, the square of a number less than one will decrease, and so therefore our error in this case for each step will decrease in proportional to h squared. So that's one explanation for why the error over that we mentioned before decreased as h decreased. But that's only the local truncation error. That's the error at each individual step. The error that we were talking about when we were comparing um, the, the solution at x equals 3 was the combined local truncation errors as we moved from x1 to x2 to x3. And that describes the accumulated truncation error. So in practice, when we're evaluating the accuracy of a solution at any arbitrary point, we're really interested in the accumulated truncation error from the starting point to that, that particular um, point that we're interested in. So we'll write the accumulated truncation error with a, with a capital E at point n, and that is equal to the exact solution at xn minus the um, approximate solution at point n. But this is over n steps of summing from 
our starting point, x0, all the way to the point of, that we're evaluating the error. And that accumulated truncation error is simply the um, local truncation error at each steps times the number of steps. Right? N is simply the number of steps that we've taken. So let's see what order uh, this uh, accumulated truncation error is of our step size. So remember, our local truncation error was of order h squared. Again, that's capital O of h squared. It's proportional to h squared. And the total to make this into a total truncation error, we multiply by n. Now let's do let's do a little bit uh, a little bit of manipulation. So we're going to multiply by one. We're just going to multiply by h and divide by h here, just, and that's to show that we have a function of order h squared times the whole distance between x n and our starting point. Right. This is n times our number or the number of steps times our step size divided by h. And so we find that when we cancel out the h's, again, remember this term is proportional to h squared, we get a function or a, an error, a cumulated truncation error of order h times xn minus x0. And so for a fixed position, um, x sub n, we find that the error the accumulated truncation error is of order h. That is, e sub n is proportional not to h squared, but to h itself. And we would describe, therefore, we would say that the Euler's method is accurate, or I guess I should say has accuracy of order one. It has first order accuracy. So what that means is that if we want uh, a certain level of accuracy, we would start off with a step size h. If we wanted the solution to be about twice as accurate, we would have to double, or we would have to have the size of our step size. If we wanted a, um, an accuracy that's four times better, we'd have to use a step size that's four times less. So we can we can visualize that process by looking at um, plotting the solution as a function of step size. So the horizontal axis here is step size, and here is the approximate solution, y at point, uh, the, the numerical solution at step n. And let's, let's just say the exact solution is at this point right here. This is the exact solution. And um, so if we look at the exact solution here, we could plot the solution uh, for a given value of h, and we might get something like this. But as we decrease the step size and plot the solution, we should get something that's approximately linear. So a linear decrease in the error, which is y n minus y uh, at the, the exact solution uh, with
with our step size h. Uh, we could also uh, visualize the results if we were to plot the error, and, and you'll get to do this in the homework. So the truncation error n at different values of h. And here we would, so that's the difference between these two, or the absolute value of the difference. Uh, really, what we're, we're really interested in the absolute value of the difference. Um, yeah, I should put absolute value. The um, truncation error is, is the absolute value of the difference. And that, again, is going to decrease approximately linearly with h. Um, and so that is what is expected of a behavior that has first order accuracy. And just to step back, if we have a truncation error that is of order h to the p power, we would say that this is of order p accuracy. And importantly, as long as p is greater than 0, then the method is convergent. This is another term, um, convergent, i.e., the solution yn becomes increasingly close to the actual solution. That's what is meant by converge to the exact solution as h decreases. So, of course, we want a behavior that is convergent. We want to be able to control how accurate our solution is. And that's uh, that occurs when p is greater than 0. And so, in for Euler's case, p was 1, and it was of order 1 accuracy. There are other cases, um, and we'll get into those later, that have higher order accuracy, that is, p is greater than 1, and that means the convergence is quicker. And by quicker, I mean that for a given step size, the solution is more accurate. In other words, as p, the order, increases, the error tends to decrease. OK, so now there's some trade-offs here that I'd like to mention real briefly here. And so one trade-off is the that um, higher order methods tend to take longer to compute. and require more computer memory, more RAM. So that's one issue to consider when considering a high order method. So one might then ask, well, why don't we just use a low order method, say a first order Euler's method, but divide our domain into very small increments? Well, the trade-off there is that the, the larger number of increments you divide your domain into, that too takes longer to compute. So low p methods uh, with 
many uh, steps. If n is the number of steps or small step sizes, also takes longer to compute. But there's yet a third consideration, and this is when I'll talk about computer round-off error. Uh, again, the computer can only represent a number by a certain number of significant figures. So if you were to divide your domain into many, many um, increments, every time you add a solution to compute each sub subsequent step, you're adding small errors associated with computer roundoff. And the more numbers that you add, then the, the larger that roundoff error tends to be. So computer roundoff errors increases with n total number of steps. So these are some three factors that need to be considered when uh, designing your numerical method. Uh, you need to make some sort of evaluation of what level of accuracy you want your solution to be, and you want to find the right mix of the number of, of the simplicity of the of the method, which tends to be, uh, you know, the lower order methods tend to be more sim simplistic. Um, a balance between the simplicity, the number, the order of your method, the number of steps uh, you think you can take given your uh, computational facilities that you have available to you. Okay, so this is this concludes uh, the two video series on Euler's equation. And we'll talk about higher order methods in the next set of videos.